Well, hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson, Director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California, and I'm an Emeritus Professor of Clinical Dentistry, UCLA. Today we're going to talk about the slot preparation, so let's get going with the armamentaria. We're going to need a 245, a 169L, and a 4 round, and this will be for the amalgam slot preparation, but I'll talk about the composite too. The enamel hatchet, the mesial and distal marginal trimmers, even though we're, we're going to be performing a distal slot, we're also going to need the mesial, and you'll see why later. Of course, an RGS-1 is essential so that we can determine the proper amount of clearance with the adjacent tooth. Let's take a look at this premolar we're going to be working on. On the left-hand side, you see the distal view and then the occlusal. It's going to have a box form like this with retention grooves that go all the way to the occlusal surface. The buccal wall will be convergent relative to the gingival. The lingual will form a 90 degree angle. And on the occlusal view, you can see that the retention grooves are going to go all the way to the occlusal surface. Very unusual, but necessary for an amalgam preparation for a slot. The other option you have, of course, is a composite. The composite preparation will be much more straightforward than the amalgam. So what we're going to do is we're going to prepare the composite first, and then we're going to then talk about what the composite finished prep would look like, then we'll move on to the amalgam. This is a 245 burr, and we're going to start the preparation right in the middle of the marginal ridge and just work our way down until we get close to breaking gingival contact. And so this tooth made by Acadental is very hard and brittle on the outside, and you sort of drop into the dentin as you notice there. So you want to be really careful and maintain an excellent finger rest. Some might want to use even a diamond, which has more of a gradual sanding effect versus a carbide. But I'm going to show you today with the carbides. So I've speeded this up just to get us through this part here. But basically, you're just swinging the burr buccolingually, but keeping in mind that the buccal wall is going to lean towards the lingual slightly, where the lingual wall will be straight up and down and follow the long axis of the tooth. So we'll continue here until we get uh, to the point where we can then remove that little shell on the distal as we've done in the past with so many other videos. It's always nice to cut a little bit, blow it out, and then look again, and then continue repeating the cycle over and over. Doing the Sturdivant chip, just knocking the wall off like we've done in the past, and leaving these little beaks of undermined enamel on either side, which we chop off at a 90 degree exit angle as best we can. And you can see that basically we're getting close to something that looks like a class three preparation. Oh, look at the carries there on the axial. And then we're gonna continue a little bit further with the 245 undermining and chipping like we've done in other videos. So you can see here the preparation is nearing completion for a composite. Just using our enamel hatchet to remove any loose enamel. And then when we look at this from the distal view, you can see the caries so beautifully present there on the axial wall. But if this were a composite, I would not stop here. I would continue a little bit further because you don't really have the kind of extension that you'd want to have for a composite preparation. You want to have just a little bit more so that you can uh, create a very smooth and well-adapted composite finish line that you can get access to. And we're going to uh, do that, but we need to deepen the axial just a little bit. That's the axial wall I'm working on. So we refer to that as axial depth. A lot of people are confused when I say axial depth. They think I mean pushing the burr towards the gingiva, but that's not the case. Axial depth means moving the burr in towards the pulpal area. So now we're entirely in 
uh, the proper depth where we've got about a half a millimeter into dentin and uh, we're at the point now where we can remove caries. You know, so for this I think a nice uh, round burr like a four round burr, a six round just won't quite fit, a two round is a little small so the, the right size here would be a four round burr and we're using a slow speed friction grip attachment, slow speed and carefully working the decay out of that area and we want to take a look at the periphery like this and and understand that it may look less stained but there may be soft areas so it's a combination of visual and tactile so it's important that you go back over the area with an explorer and make sure that none of the periphery is soft it's okay to have a little soft spot in the middle because we don't want to get a pulp exposure but the periphery area should be very firm. Now if we're going to do a composite it'd be nice to just flare the walls a little bit so we'd move those exit angles out to a more flared state and that would improve the retention and the seal of the composite up against those enamel rods. But today we're going to convert this to an amalgam design and for that we're going to need to create a little bit more of a retentive form. We'll use a 169L carbide to accomplish the sharpening of these internal line angles and then ultimately the development of retention grooves that extend from the gingival all the way to the occlusal. And you know you can use the 169L very well in a prep like this. It's long it's got a small uh, tip at the end. It's not very efficient on ending cutting, so it tends to be quite safe to use. You're going to want to use this more for uh, the walls themselves, uh, maybe removing them to the point where it's easier to use the hatchet. Also, uh, to plane the axial, to plane the lingual, to plane the facial wall. So when we get to the step where we have a more sharp internal, we now have the ability to have a good guide for the retention. And I'm just starting it here. You can see that these little retention grooves are going to be about a half a millimeter in diameter, maybe a little bit more, uh, and then they're going to extend all the way to the occlusal. You don't want to push these axially. Uh, very much. You want to follow the DEJ. So as the DEJ is moving around the tooth, it's making a circle and there will be a slight turn to the retention groove as it goes out towards the facial and towards the lingual as well. It's going to be curving towards the mesial as you push on the lingual side. It'll be curving towards the mesial as you push on the facial side for the retention groove. And it's always nice to go back in and make sure that you've uh, got good internal line angles. This preparation is a little conservative and you'll, you're going to see soon that I extend this out quite a bit more, maybe a little further than I would have liked, but um, as I mentioned, this enamel material is quite brittle and more brittle and uh, probably harder to work with than actual enamel. Now this is an interesting switch. I'm using a medial margin trimmer, not the distal, but the mesial for the purpose of enhancing the line angle between the axial and the gingival. So we're going to be scraping this way, almost creating an inward retentive groove, a, a, a ditch if you will. And there would be nothing wrong with running a little retention groove across the gingival, much in the same way we would do on a class 5 preparation. We make a gingival retention groove uh, for an amalgam prep and sometimes with the composite. So uh, this is something that I think is kind of a neat trick. Now we're also going to use the distal gingival margin or trimmer to do all the things we normally would do. You know, a slight bevel to the gingival wall. And of course we can run up the facial wall and the lingual wall as well with this instrument, much in the same way we use the hatchet. So I think at this point you can see that the preparation uh, breaks uh, the contact uh, on the lingual there about 0.5 and on the facial probably about 0 0.55, 0 0.6, maybe a little overextended, but clearly within the range of acceptability for uh, any of the bench examinations or the virtual exams that are coming soon to the United States licensing system. 
And if you wanted to, you could put a little base there on the axial wall too, but it's probably not necessary. So plenty of retention. Uh, this preparation is uh, kind of a cool little prep to do. It's not quite as easy as you may think, but it can be done when we seek mastery. Querimos Magisterium, everybody. Thanks for watching.